Oh my days. Oh my god. Is this you, bro? Like, see, this is why we can't have nice things, bro. Matter of fact, take this shit. I'm pretty sure it's about 80% of your grades, so make sure you study for the test next week. Of course, only if you don't want to be like Josh. Bro, and don't worry, what? I sent you a video with some really great study material. And, uh, yeah, get out of here. Wait. No. No. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Your next fucker. Monkey D. Ruhi. What? It's not even English. Whatever, I'll just watch this video. Okay, chop chop class. We're gonna speedrun this shit because the last thing I want is for Principal Archmage to fire me, so y'all better listen to fuck up. First things first, enemies in this game can be categorized into two main types. Monsters and humanoids. What's the difference? Monsters cannot block, parry, or dodge, meaning they have no defensive measures. But as a trade-off, this means they get a lot of hyper armor. When fighting a monster type enemy, they will use an ability from their moveset, forcing you to block, parry, or dodge, and give you time to attack them. So example Examples of monsters are this big back ass bird, this giant monkey, or the fairy man. As for humanoids, they're similar to monsters except they do have defensive measures, meaning they can block, parry, or dodge. When fighting a humanoid type enemy, they'll usually use an M1, critical, mantra, or an ability, which you would then block, parry, or dodge, and then attack after doing so. But this is where things switch up a little. Since humanoids have defensive capabilities, you can't just keep attacking. You have to react to them blocking, parrying, or dodging you. Examples of humanoids would be fishermen, dude or this sexy beast. As you guys know, next week I'll be sending you all down to find the lost student. I think, what, what was his name? Patrick or something? Anyways, you're gonna need to polish up those skills or you're not gonna pass that exam. The first thing you'll need is a really tanky brain dead build so that you can afford to get hit. If you don't know what you're doing, just go ahead and make this build. Link will be down below and stuff like stat order will be in the summary. This build doesn't give you the best sustain or the best damage, but it does give you the best balance between the two as well as being dumbass friendly. So yes, that means both you and I can use it. After you've made the build, go ahead and head over to that one enemy you've been struggling with and focus on only defense, meaning block, parry, dodge. Figure out the timings when you should parry or dodge and how long your attack windows are. Now, if you're smoking that forbidden Neve and lettuce instead of for real trying, just, just skip to the enemy encyclopedia section of this video man oh and by the way as much as everyone else tells you to spam trial of one i don't recommend doing it spamming trial of one over and over again is just five billion times less efficient than just hopping on a tanky build to practice under a little risk than to have to constantly restart the trial and go through the main menu a thousand times all right now some final tips to make your life easier for pve make sure to turn on this setting so that you can do this a lot easier when fighting corrupted mobs turn on your graphics setting to three and under so that it's easier to see them because you know i mean just look at it do you want to fight this when he's like invisible no and lastly remember you're fighting AI. They're limited to a set of rules and instructions that they're told to abide by and perform, so don't panic, okay? You have the capacity to know their every move, and they can't know yours. And uh, yeah, that's all you really need to know to beat any enemy in the game, including bosses. Anyways, please hurry the fuck up and study so I don't get fired. Oh, and if your IQ is lower than the depths, you can check out the enemy encyclopedia where I show specifically how to beat every enemy. Welcome to the enemy encyclopedia. Here's the table of contents so you can go to wherever you'd like. Now, don't tell anyone, but I actually fuck with y'all heavy, bro. There are two ways enemies can be modified in the game. You'll either get an attunement slapped onto them, or get this purple haze instead. If they're attuned to an element, they'll take 50% less damage from its own element, but take double damage from its opposing element. If they're corrupted and look all purpley and shit, they'll do 50% more damage and have 2.5 times more health. Now all enemies that look like monsters have a chance of spawning with a random attunement and or corrupted, with a few exceptions. Bosses can't naturally be attuned or corrupted. So things like Maestro Evangard Res, Dairy Man, Duke Arizia, Blame Devi. Humanoid looking enemies can only be attuned with the Diluvian mechanism. And lastly, Squibble can only be attuned to Thundercall. You fight every humanoid the exact same. 
Think about fighting humanoids like switching between offense and defense mode. When you aggro an enemy, you should always play in defense first, meaning don't attack. Just wait until they do something and then parry or dodge. After landing a successful parry, you can now switch to offensive and attack until you get parried, which now means you gotta switch back to defensive. That is literally it. It's as simple as waiting until the enemy attacks, land a parry, now attack until they parry, repeat. Now there are a few extra tips for fighting humanoids. One being fainting. Fainting actually works against humanoids, but I'd mainly stick to just weapon faints unless you know what you're doing. And second, being taunting. If you hit T on your keyboard, you can spit and this restores quite a bit of posture and also heals you a little bit. It has a 10 second cooldown, but it's super helpful against more tanky humanoids like Asuka, the Ministry Cash Agent, or a Corrupted Enforcer. Oh, and don't spit on Mitro. He's gonna pop a shard and gun bullshit and like just touchy. Now that we have everything figured out, let me provide some examples of how this actually works and how it looks live. Okay, I'm gonna try to make this as easy as possible to understand. So what I'm doing is I'm attacking, as I said earlier, until I get hit, parried, or blocked, and then I'll be patient and parry or roll. Now it is possible to attack after the enemy parries, if you're able to react to what they're doing, and if you really know what you're doing. Otherwise, I just stick to the simple and easy way of approaching humanoids. Just like with humanoids, you're going to be switching between offense and defense against monsters. Monster type enemies have a lot of hyper armor on their attack, so that means if a monster is attacking, you have to play defensive if you don't want to get hit. If you defend successfully, then you switch to offense until the enemy attacks again. Essentially, it cycles like this. Block prey or dodge the enemy attack, then attack until it's time for the enemy to attack again, and then repeat the same two things. Now, fainting works a little bit differently when you use it against monsters, well, because it doesn't do anything. But you can still use feints to cancel your M1 to parry if the monster is attacking you while you're mid-M1 animation. Almost all of the monsters in this section are essential to master, or else you low-key can't play the game. And what better way to start than with our beloved Sharko? The first move that Sharko has is a slash, and when he moves his right arm up, at the very peak of his arm going up, that's when you hit F. Like, I even show my keys in the bottom left, so look there as well, right? The only thing you gotta worry about about the single slash is that right after, like he's gonna do another attack, just be careful for that. Alright, so for the kick, all you really gotta do is after you hear the <laughs> noise, just hit Q. Preferably, I just broke cancel, but if you're buns, you can just type it, I guess. So the double slash is just like the single slash, same thing, but now you gotta watch out for the left arm as well. The Coral Barrage move is actually pretty easy. You can play it off a of sound cue and visual. If he bends over, like looking like he's about to take it, just go ahead and just tap F. You only have to hit it one time, despite it being like a bunch of attacks. I'm not gonna hold, this move is kinda useless, it's just auto or screen. All it does is make you like take increased posture damage, that's not really doing much. You can block it, but uh, I just take it. The Alpha Megalodon is the exact same as the normal one, except it gains like two new moves. But here's the thing, he actually only uses one move really, and it's Toss at Bite. He just teleports to you, and the second he teleports to you and you see him as he appears, that's when you roll. Now his second move is a drop kick. I'm not, I'm gonna be honest, I don't think I've ever seen this move used on me, like ever. It's a super rare move, uh, don't worry about it. Just like the Alpha Charco being the same as a normal Charco, the Crimson one is the same as the Alpha. So yes, it has Toss and Bite and all the other moves, but it also gains this new move called like, um, I don't know what it's called, maybe, we're gonna, we're gonna name it right now, we're gonna call it Inferno Sky. Yeah, that's, that's tough. Yeah, honestly, it's not that big of a threat, and just, just keep fighting it like normally. Um, it rarely even uses move anyway. The Mecha Sharko is the exact same as the normal Sharko, except has a few extra moves in its kit. One of them being this explosion move. Basically, it just does a combo ballerina twirl, and then after the or whatever that noise is, you hear it. Once that noise is fully complete, then you can roll. This move is actually one of the easiest things to like deal with in the game. He like jerks back and like holds his machine gun, and it even makes a sound cue like a like a noise you know what i'm saying like just tap f people like to overcomplicate this move because like this kick is different he like winds it up and revs it up but you don't even have to time the kick properly look look at me as long as the distance between you and him is like good enough he can't even hit you i'm probably gonna say a lot of stuff in this game is easy but like trust me they are the lionfish is like dead ass one of the easiest mobs in the game and it has two moves bro it just has a zero and this this move could be cheese as long as there's something blocking the line of sight between you and the lionfish it can't even hit you. And even then, it's super telegraphed. 
So you just hit Q and boom, it's useless. I like to hit Q whenever its head starts tilting down and I see the ball like also come down with it, like the Serral ball, the energy ball thing. So the second move the lionfish has is this triple bite. You parry the bites whenever his mouth opens up all the way. That's when you hit F. He can only do the bite if you're like far away enough from him. So if you get him stuck up against a tree or like any type of wall like this, then you just turn the auto clicker and leave your computer. When you see him fully disappear in the feathers is when you can mash that F key until the attack is over. Now this attack is a little tism because you can't fit an attack in with most weapons because he does another attack right after giving you no time to do so. I'm gonna cover two attacks at once here because it'll be easier to compare. So Mr. Allington has two swipe attacks, a slow one and a fast one. You can tell it's a slow one if he raises his left arm in a swing and fast if he raises his right arm in a swing. Obviously for the slow swing, you gotta wait a bit before hitting F. I would count 1-2 the second you see his left arm move and then pairing right after you say 2. For the fast swing, tap F the second his arm is fully extended up. You can fit an attack in after each parry on most weapons, kinda of depends on your attack speed. You can tell Mr. Allington is doing a primary lotus if he just, you know, like looks up and just you know just like flies up or he'll also do it after he feather flock so if he feather flocks and you don't see him appear he's probably above you to avoid this you just gotta wait a bit and then roll or you can look up and if you see him move then you can roll you might be like what why don't you just wait for that oh sound cue and then roll well the game is low-key poo poo buns and that audio cue basically plays when the owl's already doing tricks on your dick so there's no point my boy owl got a little charge move and you can tell when he does it if he puts both arms on the ground kind of like he's getting ready for a sprint anyway you can parry or roll but i recommend parrying because if you parry him he'll stop the charge early which lets you get a hit or two in first move with the thresher is the burrow now this one he just goes underground and you see this like this red particle effect showing you where he is when that particle gets like super super close to me that's when i just roll you don't even have to time it that well it's pretty easy next move is this double slash and it's the only slash move in this kit so after this you can get like roughly two to three attacks and kind of depends on your weapon weapon attack speed with the tail whip you gotta be a little patient uh this animation takes a lot longer than his other attacks so once you see him jerk his body and spin around like this just wait just calm down breathe in breathe out and then hit f with the tail whip you can get fewer attacks in than normal after you parry it so be careful for that as well if you see the thresher shake his head like he's finna say no that's when you know he's finna do the triple bite and this when you parry it like with this type of timing it's like one two three so you hit f one two three um yeah, I don't know how else to explain this better, just block play dodge, bro. Alright, Nightmare Thresher. So this is the same as the normal one, but he gets two new moves. First is his Flame Breath. And you can tell he's finna do it when his tail wags up a little bit, like this. When you see him do that, I'd wait a little bit and then roll back, because this move is unparryable. And no, don't try to block it, um, it does a lot of posture damage. I don't even know what to name this move, we're just gonna call it bullshit, because like, that's literally what it is. Like, it's super inconsistent, this attack is dumb. Like, what is he even doing here, like? Hello. Anyways, once you hear that uh, noise, uh, tap F. And then when he goes all the way back, remember, he's gonna come at you again. When he comes at you, hit F again. So you gotta parry two times. You can also roll. Also, that sound cue me means the attack is unparryable, by the way. I don't understand why I can parry. Alright, Mommy Thresher. So I'm not gonna cover this attack. This is just the exact same one that the normal Thresher has. Yep, chop chop. Black parry dodge. I know the tail whip looks just like the normal Thresher, but I'm covering it to let you know that the tail whip basically gives you no time to even follow up with an attack she tail whips and then immediately just starts attacking yeah just be careful of that a lot of people try to roll away from this body slam attack but that's actually ineffective i recommend just blocking it the move is unparryable and it's also unrollable like if you try rolling it your roll frames won't actually dodge the attack but you can roll to try to get out the way but that's kind of like rng super finicky i just recommend blocking so i know mommy thresher and normal thresher look like they have the same burrow but they don't for some reason mommy thresher if she's really far away from you and burrows towards you she's gonna release the bro super early but if she's like super close to you and burrows then she'll release it like normal if she's far away roll earlier and if she's up close to you roll whenever the red touches you just like the last move the triple bite is not the same as the normal threshers the parry pattern for this is one two three look see what i'm saying look one two three yeah the time you have to parry between the second and third bite is actually shorter than between the first and second okay last move for the mommy thresher which is the flame breath a lot of people mix this up with the tail whip and that's why they fumble like they see her jerk her head and they're like oh she's whipping her tail but when it comes to the tail whip and the flame breath the way you differentiate is by the audio cue if you hear the you know what i'm saying that's a roll okay but if you don't hear the 
then he parry. First move for the raw golem, we got the spinny shits. Uh, so basically, he just like starts twirling around. I mean, it's pretty obvious when he does it. The parry timing for it is a little weird at the start, but you can just run away. You don't even have to parry, you just full on sprint, and he can't even touch you. Now, if you want to parry, you can. Um, honestly, I recommend parrying because you can actually attack him while you're parrying. If you look, I'm doing it right now. It gets you a lot of damage because he does this move a lot and it lasts for a long ass time. This slam move where he raises both his hands and like smacks your head in. Same thing just like the Megalodon and the Owl. As his hands reach like the very peak, that's when you hit F. You gotta open your ears for this one, okay? Because this is all based on audio cue, at least for me, it's based on the sound. So you hear how when he charges up the laser, it makes that that noise. Near the end of that, that's when you want to roll, right? Um, and you're even gonna roll good. Like your timing doesn't have to be that great. Alright, uh, guys, just stop now. When he raises his foot up, okay? When he raises it as high as he possibly can, hit F. That is all, short and simple. Just hit key right after you hear that, that noise. Sorry, I don't know how to, re I don't know how to recreate these noises, but you get the point. Just hit key right after you hear it. Not the second you hear it, but like right after the noise is finished playing. Yes, yeah, when you roll. Okay. Okay. So there's actually one more move, and it sounds like this. He just roars and goes, Aah! and when he does that, a bunch of rocks will start falling down from the sky. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know how to counterplay this. Like, just, just, just take it, bro. Plus, this move is super rare, so you're not even finna see it like that. Golem Prime is just like normal Golem, but black, and also gains one new laser move. And he gets like hella lasers. That's basically the move. And for this one, just zigzag back and forth. Yeah, just jump left, jump right, jump left, jump right. I, I, I don't know. If you, if you can't understand this, like, just give up. The Terrapod is one of the most poorly designed enemies in the game, and it's mainly because of this move. He slashes 12 times while moving like a retard, so pairing is a little hard. But assuming he's not tweaking out, you can just hit F every time his arm extends up as far as it can. Now you are gonna have to sometimes mix blocking, pairing, and dodging, because as you can see, this dude is missing his attacks. The cross slash identified easily by him raising both his arms it's just one single slash and for this just hit f when his arms extend all the way up same as last one final move in the terapods kit is the triple slash you parry it the same way you do with the other two as his arm rises up all the way tap f there is another variant of the terapod called the crimson terapod it is the exact same with the same move set same everything except the color and i think it has more health that's it. i'm not gonna spend too much time on this one like Come on, just stack gap this thing. Just mash left click. If you really want to block parry dodge this thing, then I guess I'll break it down. It alternates between the same two moves, a flight attack and a kick. For the flight, make sure you're a decent range away from it or else it'll miss the attack and throw off your parry timing. For the kick, if you see his head drag back a bit, then just hit up. The Stone Knight, Blizzard Knight, and Moon Knight are all the exact same. The Knights will slash one time and either give you an attack window or slash again. You can tell if it'll slash again because it'll raise the blade back up into the air. And if it doesn't, that just means you get to touch it up for a little bit if you hear the uh, sound effect and the knight jerks his leg back and then just roll cancel okay now if you hear the uh, sound effect and the knight slams his fist into the ground then roll to dodge the pillar now you can roll cancel but you get a time you roll a little bit later if you want to roll cancel so i recommend just rolling normally unless you're like really good the knight will only use this move if you're not in melee range of it now you can block parry or dodge this for parrying just wait until right before the wind blade is about to hit you and then hit F. Okay, so I kind of lied about all three knights being the same. The Moon Knight actually gains one new move and it activates passively every now and then. And what it does is it rains out a bunch of blue flaming swords. Now low key, it don't even do nothing for real. Like, it does a little bit of damage, I guess. I just tank it all. Like, alright guys, come on, are you serious? No, I'm... I'm not teaching you how to fight a Giga Man, okay? You you have to at least learn how to do this on your own, okay? Like, no excuse, bro. No excuse. So the Mommy Jellyfish is actually really easy because not only can you solo her at power 1 no matter how bad you are, but she also has a set attack pattern which most moms don't. Her attacks cycle like this, okay? So she starts off with summoning Jellyfish at you, and it's 3. It gives you time to attack, and then shocks you. Gives you more time to attack, and then shocks you. Gives you more time to attack, and then repeats the entire cycle all over again. Now sometimes she'll throw in a repulsion move and all it does is bounce you back so it's not really that deep to deal with the jellyfish summons either roll them like this or vent them like this after you deal with the jellyfish and get two to three hits in depending on your attack speed hold block just hold it okay hold block to block the electric shock and then get a few more hits in 
and then hold block to block the second electric shock, then get two to three hits in, and then repeat. That's literally it, okay? Don't worry about your posture being broken whenever you block, by the way, because remember, she literally heals you and gives you posture from venting her summons. All right, guys, I'm not gonna teach you how to fight this crap. Like, it has one attack. Same thing as Giga Myth. Block in. Just move out the way if you see him launch up. It's not even worth trying to roll this move because it's just so buggy. For the grab, despite the mm. noise sound effect playing, this move is actually blockable. But I'd still roll it so you can get an extra hit in or two. Um, yeah, roll it. Don't block, even though you can. If you start seeing blue orbs appear, just move out the way. Move into him, to the side, wherever. As long as you're not getting hit, it'll let you get a bunch of hits in. Oh, and it's also blockable, but it does zero posture damage, so... Um, yeah. Just hit F whenever his body turns, like you'll see it jerk to the side. Now if you pair his first swing, it'll cancel the second swing. So I recommend pairing instead of like rolling or blocking or whatever. Now if he raises both his arms, then that means he's gonna slam down on you, okay? But the thing is, you don't even have to try that hard to avoid this move. Just walk, sprint, roll, move. Just move, bro. Just move into him and get out the way. Alright guys, I'm not gonna lie for the first mob, the Diver Husk, um, if you're struggling against this, I look, just quit the game, bro. They can't even fight back once you hit them, bro. Just, okay, as long as you keep swinging, they will die, okay? Carbuncles only have two moves, and they're both identified by sound cues, okay? If you hear a low pitch, or whatever the hell noise is making, um, that means it's gonna wait a little bit, and then swing four times. The next move the carbuncle has is a super fast single hit, and you can tell it's finna do it if it does a high pitch. Alright, so if you hear high pitch, that means uh, parry fast. Before the bounders slash at you, they're gonna jerk their body back like I jerk my peanuts and swing with either side of their body. Now, I prefer hitting F after their arm extends all the way back, but if you wanna be wrong, that's cool too. Be careful though, cause sometimes instead of slashing once, they're gonna slash twice, so you know, just, just watch out. Once they get it on all fours and start bopping their head up and down, that means it's time to move, bruh, cause that dog is gonna charge at you. This move isn't parryable or blockable, so just get out the way or roll. Banners beyond they leapfrog shit, so just be careful when they like spring their legs back and jump at you, okay? Run away or roll towards where they jump from. This move isn't parryable, blockable, or dodgeable, so you just have to not be in the hitbox. If he stomps the ground and sends out these bones at you, just jump over them. You don't even get a time at that well, bruh. I recommend you parry this move because it is unrollable, okay? Your dodge frames will not save you. Oh, and for the parry timing, I hit F after he jerks his body forward to check the bone at me. If you hear the freak noise, just roll, or if you want, you can just walk backwards while attacking to get extra hits in. However, I recommend rolling since that's safer, but if you're comfortable with it, feel free to walk backwards. The shoulder bash charge move he got is low-key annoying as hell because the hitbox lags behind his model by like 17 light years. You can parry this or roll it, but parrying is a lot better since parrying makes him cancel his charge sooner, meaning you get more hits in. This is his most common move, okay? He's gonna spam this shit low. Key. When you see him wind his right arm back and you don't hear the freak noise, that means he's finna drill you. So just hit F if you see that. And sometimes he'll do a leap right after, but you can just deal with this by walking towards him. It's not even like, it's not even that scary, bro. Okay, guys, this is dead ass. It's just a bandit, bro. These guys are literally just bandits. Okay, that is it. Guys, I'm not gonna lie. This, this dude might be easier than a bandit. Like, just look. Okay, he swings, gives you time to attack like once, swings again, lets you swing like two to three times, and then smacks the floor and then repeats. Look at him, bro. You don't even have to, like, try dodging his slam. You can just walk through him. Okay, this is Loki, just like, this This might be easier than the brute, okay? Like, this might be a mud skipper jellyfish level, bro. It has one move, bro. They're only scared because they appear in large groups most of the time, and they can turn invisible, and I guess sometimes there's this bug where they just stay invisible forever. But aside from, you know, that crazy bug, they just, this is all they do, bro. They just, like, crawl up to you and then, shing, shing, and then crawl back. That's it. Okay, so this is easily the hardest cures an enemy because it has, like, a lot of moves, flies up into the air, can shoot you at long range, and can appear in groups. This move isn't blockable unless you're fighting the ones inside of the Ethereum place, so make sure we block, we parry, we dodge. Okay, wait, no, only parry and dodge, don't block. Ugly ass move, but anyways, this also isn't blockable. The timing is a little freaky because these projectiles always got some crazy lingering hitbox. But yeah, just hit F or dodge when they're about to reach the highest point they can in the air. Loki, kinda just like a thresher bite, except the third attack is a lot slower. So the timing is something like one, two, and three. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. Okay, so I kind of lied about covering every enemy. These two aren't going to be in the video because I feel like it'd be wrong to cover how to defeat Ethereum and Chaser without going in depth about stuff like what builds you use or routes you use, etc, etc. So I'll cover these two in my ultimate layer 2 guide video. You know what I'm saying? This mob is only scary because it has high damage and health, okay? Like it's not- okay, well. Sometimes it negates all forms of healing if it's purple, but listen, okay, you literally only have to do three things. It doesn't matter if it's a brute or a brutalist, okay? They're both the same thing, except one's just a little bit crazy. The brute or brutalist will just keep swinging at you and occasionally use an unparryable move. If you hear that freaky sound effect and you see red, just roll and continue parrying it and winning it like this. You loop it through the cycle the entire time, okay? Just repeat this over and over again and eventually you will win. When he first aggroes on you, he'll spawn in mud skippers and shit. But like, I mean, they're mud skippers, like they're not really that big of a threat. You can just one shot them if you're a power 20, bro. If you're out of melee range, Blue Lords will chuck a mud skipper at you that'll either act as one of his summons or explode on impact. Either way, as long as you move to the side or dodge it, you won't get hit. They'll also make the freak noise and leap on top of you if you're out of melee range as well, but you can just roll that. You don't really have to worry about these two moves anyways because you don't want to be outside of melee range. And last piece of advice, I highly suggest that you do not roll cancel the freak punch or the freak leap because they have lingering hit boxes and any lag spike will basically confirm that you're hit and this is really really bad because you do not want to be getting hit by a breathe lord since they'll cancel your healing and yes that includes getting health from health packs you fight this guy the same way you fight a humanoid except he has some extra freaky moves the best way to fight him is to just stand still and parry trade okay if you have a guard break critical on your weapon then use that after you parry when it's off cooldown and if you get too far away he's gonna do one of two moves the pull can't be blocked or parried but you can dodge it i'm pretty sure i might be wrong either way he'll just pull you back into melee range that's all it doesn't do damage or anything whenever he beyblades it's super similar to the way the rock golem beyblades like you can parry while attacking him in this move just like the rock golem but if you're not comfortable, you can just stick to mashing F against it. No need to attack while you're parrying. That's like fancy bonus points. Okay guys, school bow is literally just a dagger bandit smoking that forbidden the bay and lettuce. Okay, I'm for real. When you parry against school bow, hold F until you hear the parry noise. If you don't hear the parry noise, that means he fainted. But because you're holding F, you'll end up blocking that faint. You know what I'm saying? You see the vision, bro. And after you block one or two hits, attempt to parry again. By the way, yes, you can parry out of a block if you didn't know. Just like the enforcer, if you have a guard break critical, please use it after you parry if it's off cooldown. You don't want to use anything elemental like mantras, and that includes physical mantras, or certain enchants, because they just won't work against this guy, because, you know, he's just built like that. If you're out of melee range, he's gonna use a stomp move, but, I mean, if you hear the freak noise, just roll. Like, it's not really a threat. He also has a dropkick move that he'll use if you're outside of melee range, but it's like super rare. I think I've seen him use it like maybe 3-5 to five times total and I run Val Thorns on every single build, which means this guy shows up in my trial. Fighting Lightning Scribble is the same except his attacks stun you for longer, but don't worry okay, this isn't as scary as it sounds I promise. All this means is that if you get hit by him and with a parry, you should wait a little bit, like wait for him to hit you once or maybe twice before trying to get a parry in again, because the way you lose is by constantly whiffing parries over and over. Yeah, Scribble's honestly one of the easiest mobs once you can wrap your head around how he works, like he's I, I, I promise you, he's dead. That's just a dagger bandit on like crack okay. The hive and rogue constructs are the same, except the hive one spawns in trees when it stomps, but the trees don't really do anything. Uh, yeah, toss shit. Whatever you do, do not get hit by this. The super freak slam kinda hurts and it's really obvious when he uses it. Like look, his hand is radiating bro, okay? Don't try blocking, don't try parrying. This is just a roll and move out of the way scenario. I'm not sure why he takes 7 business days to let his foot connect with the floor again, but yeah, you gotta wait a hot minute before you get to hit F against this one. If you hear that scary noise, that means he's about to smack you, okay? It's unparryable, unblockable, so drop, stop, and roll. I'm gonna keep it in absolute 100. Okay, I deadass learned how to fight Deep Little while working on this video because like, why would you ever want to learn how to not stat gap her? But uh, yeah, here it is. After like 30 minutes, I figured her out. The cross slash move is kind of like really fast, so just watch out. You'll know she's using it if she raises both her arms, um, just parry. If she swings with her left or right leg and it's not a winded up attack, that means it'll only be one swing. But she typically uses another one of her abilities right after, like it could be the bite, a cross slash, an assault, whatever. If she winds up a fat swing with her right side, she's 100% gonna bite you right after, so be careful of that, okay? The bite isn't parryable or blockable, you have to roll. When the spider winds up her left side, she's gonna do one slash, and then two really fast slashes right after. Now you low-key have to pre-parry the two slashes, it's like kinda similar to how you parry the thresher bites, just with like different timings. 
Now I covered the bite a little bit earlier, but yeah, it's a really simple move, honestly. If you hear the freak noise and our head tilts up, roll cancel. Okay, just dodge. It's not parryable, it's not blockable. Okay, so the web shot isn't actually an active skill she uses. It seems like the web shot is a passive skill, and every now and then it'll just randomly come out. And here's the crazy part about this move, okay? It's unparryable, unblockable, and undodgeable. And if you get hit, it prevents you from rolling, meaning it's the perfect setup for her to take a fat chomp out of you. In my experience, the most consistent and best way I've avoided the move without cheesing her is by rolling out of the way at a diagonal angle backwards on either the left or right side. To fight Kaido, you need to use an auto manifestation in the Void C, okay? And auto manifestation has a 100% drop chance if you solo any boss for the first time on that character. You can also drop when you're playing with other players, just a lower chance. Please, 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 I'm begging. Don't ever try fighting the Dread Serpent normally, bro. Just head over to Bowman's Watch where Fairy Man is, follow this path. Spawn Kaido out here in the ocean and then lure him back to his ledge, okay? Every time he's about to use his dread breath, climb up on these other ledges to avoid getting hit because sometimes the breath will bug out and hit you despite it being nowhere near you. And aside from that, you just mash M1 the entire time, okay? That's it. You can spawn Primadon by heading to the Monkey's Paw Island and sacrificing monster parts to this campfire. But I just recommend using 3 Umbro Obsidian because Umbro Obsidian is really cheap and common and it even drops from him so you can just keep looping him over and over again as long as you're winning. Once you spawn him in, just jump off and get your fall damage by move stacking your glider with an aerial dash to start fighting him. So first he he has a bunch of melee moves, okay? It's a single stomp, triple stomp, kick, and rock throw. Those are four main moves that you have to worry about because he's not going to use any of the other skills unless you're out of melee range. And you don't want to be out of melee range, okay? If the monkey raises his right foot, then that means it's one stomp, so you only parry one time. If the monkey raises his left foot, then that means it's three stomps, so you parry three times. You can tell he's about to kick if he winds his leg back. Okay, this is not blockable, not parryable. Don't try it, just roll. Now when the monkey jumps, that means he's about to chuck a rock at you. I prefer air dashing through it like this, but you can also block it. And even though you can parry it, I don't recommend it because again, it's just really buggy. Don't recommend parrying, just block or dodge. Next are all of his medium range moves, and he only has two. He won't use any of these unless you're slightly outside of stomping range. So fortunately, you don't gotta worry about them, okay? First one is the punch. If he winds up his left arm, he's gonna punch you. And Sometimes it's fast and sometimes it's slow, so just roll instead. Um, I'm not sure why it does that, that might be a lag. And then the grab looks exactly like his punch except it's on his right side. This one isn't parryable, so you have to roll this one. And finally, he has one long range move for us to cover, which is his triple rock throw. He won't ever use this move unless you're really far away from him. I recommend rolling instead of blocking or parrying because it's super inconsistent and super choppy. Just trust me, okay, just roll. Now this big ass monkey does have a second phase, but it's like not even that crazy for him. him hitting second phase is like your latina girlfriend getting angry okay they both become faster and more violent monkey boy still uses the same moves still has the same personality he's just a little bit faster oh and when he enters second phase he applies insanity but it's a blockable just hold f and yeah that's really it for Pimanon. i honestly don't really want to cover my show because he's dead ass just a beefier bandit with some freaking mantras but if you really need it i'll cover all of his attacks before we get into that though, let's talk about what you need to even fight him in the first place. You need to ally reputation or higher with Etria, and then you need to give this dude a Gale Stone. He's located right here on the map, and then go to Isle of Vigils, and then talk to this guy. He's sitting like right here. And then you gotta be power 15 or higher, have your 80 and one weapon stat, and the last thing you need is Loki a spoiler for the story. So if you're new to the game and care about the story, um, spoiler warning chat, be careful. Okay, I'm gonna speed run this, alright? So you need friend reputation or higher with Etria, then talk to this guy. And then after that, talk to this librarian and then spam one. Then do it again and spam one. Now head over right this way. Talk to this black guard, then go up to the palace up here, and then talk to Mr. Shadow Slicer 1107 and spam one. Now all you need to do is head all the way over here and kill Duke. And uh, with all that done, you can now find Maestro. Okay, now as for Maestro's attacks, okay, obviously he uses M1s and criticals, okay? This move is kind of like Master's Flourish, but the parry timing is really weird, like you end up getting hit before the visual of the move comes out, so you have to actually parry based on his model's animation instead of the VFX of the Flourish. This is another move that's super similar to the Thresher Bites, just a 
timing is a little bit different, right? Like the timing is kind of like one, two, and roll. You know what I'm saying? Just a little bit of a pause. He has like a cracked out version of Heavenly Wind. He like flies up in the air and stomps back down. Once you see him lift up in the air, roll or parry. Uh, yeah, that's really it. Pretty basic move. And then he has this like fat ass tornado thingy. Um, treat it like an enforcer spin, a golem spin, a barrage move like that. Just mash F, okay? You can you can actually attack while he's doing this um, if you know what you're doing, but I don't recommend it. Unless you're goaded, don't do it, okay? And then he has this weird ass one car. Um, just walk out the way. Like You can also just spam parry, but it's not really that big of a threat, honestly. Just like the last move though, you can attack while parrying if you know what you're doing. If you see one particle surrounding Maestro, then that means he's gonna fucking flash that behind you after a little bit, and then a bunch of wind blades are gonna appear, okay? It's on some crazy weep shit, but just be patient and parry or move out the way. Really easy mantra to deal with. Whenever he bends down low to the ground, he's gonna teleport and ankle cutter you. It's low-key really hard to react to if he's like really far away from you, but if you can parry it, great. If you can't, don't worry, it's chill. It doesn't do two bars in one hit, so you're fine. But the parry timing is you just tap F when you see him like crouch down. Okay, and then a few little side notes. Um, Spitting on my show, like don't do that. I think I've talked about that like four times in this video already. If you spit on him, he will end your bloodline on the spot. Don't do it. He's also capable of venting. Um, it Loki doesn't do anything. It just knocks you away. Oh, and occasionally he just like randomly teleports to a random part of the arena. I think this is to prevent macros or something. But uh, yeah, just don't worry too much about it. Just reposition if he teleports. So Daddy Duke Arizzi is Loki just like my show. Just a beefy bandit with some fancy mantras, okay? If you didn't see the my show part about Lord Regent's quest, go watch it real quick and then come back here. I'll leave the timestamp on screen. Anyways, continuing from where we left off. You're gonna use the mana key that you got from Lord Regent to open this gate. Go inside, kill all the mobs, then smack this lever to go downstairs into an instance dungeon. Then kill all the mobs in here, and this gate will open. Run past all the mobs and head straight into Duke's room. Once you talk to him, the fight will start. So before you fight him, let me cover the phases and moves. Of course, he's gonna use M1s in his critical. Daddy Duke Arizia floats up slowly and then, ah, releases these homing orbs that trap you. And then, yeah, he just teleports to you touches you. I I recommend parrying. It's a lot more consistent for me on this move because sometimes whenever you roll, these homing orbs will miss and then swerve back at you. That's not that's not chill. If Daddy Duke Arizia floats up fast, that means fast attack, so parry fast. Okay guys, Gale Stomp is not parryable, so pretty please roll it. Okay? Please and thank you. You know he's using it if he lifts his leg up and you hear it's kind of like an inhaling noise, um, yeah, something like that. Loki, don't even worry about this move. I've only seen him use it once. Even if he does use it, just spam the FP, bro. Like, it's just a mini ethereal note. So I'm slight. Arizia's strong left got fucking pack a punch because his teleports him to you. So, uh, yeah. His strong left has 5 star range. Don't let that throw you off. Parry your strong left even if he's like 13 body eagles away from you. After he's strong left, by the way, that's when he starts like m warning and critting. Um, just to let you know. Once he enters phase 2, he gets his new ability, um, where he can spawn these mudskipper things or these mama servants, I think they're called. I mean, they're, they're just mudskippers reskinned, bro. The reason he spawns these is to help you, okay? Because if you down them, you get a health pack. Don't panic, because if you panic, you'll get infinite combo. And then another move he gets when he's in phase two is his counter. Um, he'll put up like a green shield. If you smack it, he'll like touch you up. Don't hit it. Okay, so phase one, really easy against Duke. Just parry trade of him like this. That green shield around him automatically parries everything, but it'll go away if you hit it enough times. So just keep smacking him. But whenever he stands idle, after using one of his abilities, don't get super greedy, okay? Don't keep swinging. You wanna wait for him to use his next move because if you're stunned from being parried by a shield, you might not be able to avoid the next ability. Once the green shield goes away, he enters phase two. The only difference now is that you can actually hit him and he gets access to two new skills, summoning the mindless servants and a counter. Neither of these are really threatening. Just fight him like how I told you how to fight humanoids and you'll be fine. Of course, be wary of his abilities and shit, but I already broke those down for y'all, so. Yay, good luck, yay. So I classify Ferryman as a monster type enemy because he doesn't block, parry, or dodge and has 24 seven hyper armor. In order to fight this beautiful beast, you need to find a way to light campfire such as a flint, umbro flint, discovery of fire, produce spark, or flame wisp. And of course at least four campfires. Think of campfires like your ticket into ferryman, okay? Four campfires equals one battle with ferryman. Once you got all that, head west of this spot here and you'll see an island called the boatman's watch in the void sea. And it's surrounded by whirlpools so you should like avoid those or else your boat's gonna sink and you'll get sent to the depths. At the center of the island if you see this white ring and it's glowing neon, that means hey, let's place out my campfire like this, and then light them up. If the ring is not neon, then silver hop until you find one that's glowing. And uh, boom, you can fight Ferryman now. I'll cover his abilities based on the faces because you do gotta change it up a little anyways. Um, 
for phase one, we got Lightning Assault, okay? He's finna hit this pose where he kinda looks like he's about to whip out a shrap and then dash around to hit you three times. The parry timing on this is like one, two, three. You feel me? Oh, by the way, if you parry all three attacks, he'll stand still for a bit and let you caress him a little. And obviously, if you don't parry one of the attacks, he'll just teleport away if you attack near him. The Lightning Rain is basically harmless as long as you're moving around, like it low-key just can't hit you. And if you're hitting him, it also can't hit you. Yeah, this is just like a free way to get damage off on him, okay? Don't be worried about this move. Use this as like, if you see if you see Lightning Rain, you gotta be thinking, wow, yes, yippee. Lightning Clones is also basically harmless. I just abuse aerial attacks to get rid of the clones that he spawns in. It's actually kind of more annoying than it is a threat, like he low-key just wasting time. After dealing enough damage to him, he's gonna enter phase two. Ooh. And uh, yeah, he gets access to Grand Volley. It's just a bunch of like Grand Javelins. Um, Deadass, if you just run around and dodge, it's really like, it's really hard to get hit if you're constantly moving. You know what I'm saying? Like just move, bro. Now the good news is that he doesn't gain any more moves than Grand Volley, but his Lightning Assault becomes a lot faster. So you have to change the parry timing instead of parrying like one, two, three. You gotta parry like one, two. I know it's crazy, but trust, okay? The other parry frames from the first parry will cover the second attack, and your second parry will cover the third attack. Also, it's just like phase one lightning assault. If you miss a parry, he won't let you get free hits in. So make sure you land your parries. If you land your parries, you get more hits in. The lightning ring functions exactly the same, except it's just a lot faster. Just deal with it the exact same way, okay? Constantly be moving, and this time, just use your rolls a little bit more carefully. Remember, if you see lightning ring, you gotta be like, yay, yes, yippee. Uh, he's basically giving you like a free ticket to like smack his ass. Okay, just smack him. Yeah, aside from that, thanks for watching. Be safe. I love y'all. Um, peace. Oh, by the way, I hit like 10 Kirby's in the video. If you find one, screenshot it, DM it to me on Discord, and you're the first one, I'll give you like a Crib Blade, Pirate Keeper, Imperial Stone, some legendary weapon.